Mr. President. Senator from Washington. Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent the quorum call be lifted. Without objection. Mr. President, this past Sunday marked the 20-year anniversary of the war in Iraq. Now, I could not be prouder of our service members who bravely have served our nation overseas, and I'm deeply grateful for their service and their sacrifice, and I am committed to making sure we live up to our obligations to each and every one of them. But as I have said many times, this is a war I never thought we should have started, and it's one we clearly should have ended long ago. So I come to the floor today to urge my colleagues to commemorate the anniversary of this war by officially ending this badly outdated war authorization at long last. I urge them to join me in taking the long overdue step of reasserting Congress's authority in decisions about war and peace by voting to repeal the 1991 and 2002 authorizations for use of military force. Because, Mr. President, when we send people to war, it should be a decision, not a status quo. Mr. President, the decision about whether or not to go to war and put service members' lives at risk is the most serious and most consequential issue we can debate here in the United States Senate. American lives, American security, America's future are all at stake when our country decides questions of war and peace. And when we first deliberated on whether to take action in Iraq, I wanted to know with absolute confidence we had done our due diligence before moving forward with the weighty decision to send our men and women into a dangerous conflict. That is why all those years ago, I came to the floor to debate the very resolution that gave President Bush the authority he wanted to wage war in Iraq. I wanted to know what our goals were what our plan was, what a victory and an exit strategy looked like, and what evidence we had that this was necessary. And I will tell you, after hearing all the sides on whether to engage our military, one thing I still was not hearing was clear answers. I determined I could not support sending our men and women into harm's way on an ill-defined mission, a mission which ultimately cost us dearly in lives, most importantly, but also in dollars and in our standing around the world. 20 years later, the mission in Iraq is over. Our troops have returned home, and Iraq's government has evolved into a diplomat diplomatic partner. But those outdated legal authorizations remain on the books, leaving an open-ended basis for presidents to misuse our military power for political gain. And we have already seen how leaders can use them as a free pass to recklessly push for the misuse of military force. Just three years ago, without consulting Congress, former President Trump ordered missile strikes in Iraq against an Iranian military leader, which, among many things, jeopardized our relationships with key allies, risked the safety of US service members and civilians, and brought us perilously close to war. That's not how this should work. That is not how the Constitution says it should work. Our service members deserve better than that. When and whether to engage in war is a choice that explicitly belongs to Congress and to the American people. And if we don't assert that power, we risk leaving behind a dangerous precedent for the future. That is why I'm voting to repeal these authorizations. Taking this step, We'll make sure we're doing our part here in Congress to give questions of war the full consideration they deserve and make sure we're exhausting every diplomatic avenue before jumping into a full-blown war effort and putting service members in harm's way. I saw the scars, physical and mental, that veterans like my dad took home from World War II, that veterans like my peers took home from Vietnam, that veterans today have taken home from Iraq. This is one of the most important votes we can make, so let's act like it. Let's ensure every decision made to authorize the use of military force is responsible, is appropriate, and is constitutional. I hope that by repealing these outdated AUMFs, we return to a place where Congress, and by extension, the American people, 
can have a serious debate and ultimately decide about whether or not we go to war. It is long past time for Congress to reassert its authority and oversight responsibility here. So I urge my colleagues to join me, Senators Kane and Young, in getting this done. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the floor. Clerk will call the roll.